NBA trade deadline is on February 18th, which we are shooting this on Friday. You will see this clip on Saturday, the 13th, which means you are five days away from what, uh, one of two things. All hell breaks loose in the NBA, like last season, and everybody and their mother gets moved to a different city. Or maybe like two years ago, where it was a little more quiet. Regardless, multiple teams are going to be shopping and selling uh, in terms of what they might need or what they want to maybe load up on picks. Who knows? Just some of the names, some of the storylines that have been floating through Hoops Hype and NBA.com and, and every blog, Bleacher Report, the Twitterverse, uh, Blake Griffin and Al Horford. I mean, even the names like Russell Westbrook get thrown around, although that would be completely ridiculous. Some more realistic names, Jeff Teague, Michael Carter-Williams, Greg Monroe. Man, some of these guys just signed over the summer. Some might be moving. Of course, we bring back on the professor of hoops, Andre Snellings, to help us break down what he thinks uh, most teams are in need of and which teams are going to make a push. So, Andre, of all these storylines, uh, and of course, with the, the chaotic All-Star weekend right ahead of us, and then three, four days after that, the real rumors start to surface, what teams do you think are in most need as of today, or of course next week, to really make a push in the playoffs? To me, the team that I think might be most likely to make a deal, I don't know if they, they needed to make a push for the playoffs. I think they're going to make the playoffs. But um, I think the Celtics are just in a great position to make a move. They're already a good team in the East. They're going to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But they have so many pieces, so many draft picks, so many tradables. And they have a team that's already set up that's very good, especially on the perimeter. And they could use a big. And so, I mean, you mentioned Al Horford, um, Dwight Howard, Blake Griffin, you know, names of big men that might be on the move. Seems like the Celtics are just the squad that should be able to put together a package to get one of those if they decide they want one. Right. And it's amazing about the Celtics because they have so many draft picks. They really don't know what to do with them. They have draft picks this year. They got draft picks next year. You can pass go, collect 200 more draft picks for the following <laughs> year. Uh, and, of course, they're a huge name. What's so interesting to me about the Celtics is that they're not on the bottom of that mess of the Eastern Conference where every team is within a game and a half, two, three games of swapping everything. The seventh seed becomes the three seed on any given night. The Celtics are actually towards the top. They're the uh, three seed as of two days ago when I checked the standings, two days ago being Wednesday. Um, and not far behind striking distance, I would say, of the two. Obviously, we pretty much know the Cavs will run away with the one seed. But they don't have everything there to contend for a title yet. They just have a great coach and a smart play caller in Brad Stevens, an all-star point guard in Isaiah Thomas, but no really go-to back to the basket, even if that exists in today's game, but score in that way. So a high IQ player like Al Horford, at least to me, would be an awesome fit. And I guess we can't count out that the most uh, heavily read rumor for the last two years is Boogie Cousins is going to the Celtics. <laughs> We've seen that uh, go through the Twitterverse and, of course, Bill Simmons, the Celtics homer uh, himself. But all right, so outside of the Celtics, we have them. Dwight Howard's been a big name. And I was reading up today about the Rockets cap space and how they're going to have to find enough money to swap that deal for. You know, Dwight wanted to get out of Orlando, ends up going to the Lakers. That implodes. He goes to the Rockets. Is Dwight Howard enough? I guess the question I'm going to ask is, where would Dwight Howard go if you can think of any place that would fit for him best? And will it help or hurt the team, at least chemistry-wise, in the long run? See, that's a great question because, honestly, okay, the best fit for Dwight Howard's talents would be who we just talked about, the Boston Celtics, mm -hmm. um, because – they don't need him to come in and build around him. What they need, you know, you mentioned the back-to-the-basket score. What they need more than that is a back-to-the-basket defender. And Dwight Howard can still be a, a solid defensive anchor. Um, I think he fits perfectly there. Now, the problem is that's what he is. I don't know if that's what he thinks he is. <laughs> you know, um, when he was in L.A. and in Houston, you always hear all of this noise that, you know, he's unhappy. The ball's not being passed to him enough. He's not being able to be the focal point the way he feels like maybe he should be. And I don't think he ever was that, but he really isn't that now. And so if if that's going to be an issue, like you mentioned chemistry, if, if that's what he thinks he is, then, yeah, he could be a chemistry problem 
anywhere that's trying to win. And so if that's the case, then the best, uh, to me, the best target for them is a type of team that's not in the playoffs, that's just kind of trying to find somebody to build around for the future and, and that maybe doesn't have any aspirations of winning anytime soon. Yeah, I would, I would, I've always thought, like, Dwight, go back to Orlando. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. he got the farthest with Orlando uh, when they made the finals. And unfortunately, I mean, they got crushed by the Lakers uh, in the 4-1 series. But I think it would always be, I think it was a good fit for him when he was there. I thought he never should have left, and I think he should still go back. I mean, I'm sure the people in Orlando would welcome him back with open arms. They loved him when he was there, and they did a lot for the franchise. I, I, I can't say I'm sure. I think that they would open him back with open <laughs> arms. It's a little bit different of a Dwight Howard nowadays. But uh, another, another team that I, was, I was, that I wrote down at least, with Marcus Gasol out for the season with that foot injury, uh, and the Memphis Grizzlies knowing that Mike Conley will likely, got to watch the words here, but likely test free agency in the offseason, Mike Conley is a high-impact player that could be on the market for the trade deadline, especially at the very deep point guard position. His biggest asset is he's one of the better defensive point guards. And when you have teams in the Western Conference that are going to be going up against the likes of Stephen Curry, Russell Westbrook, we can name a thousand guys, Chris Paul, Isaiah Thomas, and in the Eastern Conference, a little bit weaker, you still got guys that that might be a very valuable position. And the only other name when it comes to point guard that's really on the trade market, we think, is Jeff Teague. Both those guys could be going places. It started off with the rumors to the Knicks, which I would love. Get a, uh, a buy, buy low on Jeff Teague for the Knicks would be, I think, a great move. Maybe a little bit of bias coming out, just a little bit. Um, or someone like Mike Conley, but not just the Knicks. Many teams could use a point guard off the top of your head, man. I mean, I'll th throw you a curveball here, but uh, what teams do you think would be interested in a guy like Mike Conley or Jeff Teague coming through? Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the playoff teams actually have solid point guards. Um, if you just kind of scroll through the standings, especially in the West, um, you know, you got Steph Curry. The Spurs have Tony Parker, who's not what he used to be, so maybe that could be, That's interesting. you know, bring in one of those guys to, to work with him. Um, the Thunder have Westbrook. The Clippers have Paul. Uh, he'd be coming from Memphis. I guess the Mavericks, um, their point guard position, you know, Darren Williams is supposed to be that guy. I, I guess they wouldn't trade for him because they just got Darren Williams, but I'm not convinced. Um, the Trailblazers, obviously, they're, they're good there. Uh, Utah is another team, actually. That's always actually, they'd be a really guard, good yeah. fit for, for, for a new point guard because they've got their, their big men. They've got some good wings. Um, you know, they got Trey Burke at point. You know, he's out of Michigan, you know, alma mater and everything, but... That, that's a position they could upgrade. I was going to say, Trey Burke, always a happy name to be brought up because he made me a lot of money in the NCAA tournament. When that, uh, With that, that tournament. three? That was him, Tim Hardaway Jr., and I'm missing one more. It was, uh, was it Glenn, Glenn Robinson, Robinson III? III? It was a bunch of, it was the children of NBA greats and Trey Burke. Trey Burke was fantastic, though, and he won. Uh, he was Big Ten Player of the Year and deserving of that mm -hmm. season. That was the closest thing we've seen to the Fab Five returning together, basically, in, in Michigan history. But, well, uh, yeah. You know, that didn't officially ever happen. You know, the right. Fab Five didn't exist. <laughs> that's, well, that's actually true. They took down the banners, which, come on, everyone mm -hmm. knows that they totally existed. Let's be real. <laughs> but, uh, of course, as many teams, I mean, in the Eastern Conference, too, there's too many point guards. I think that's what's unfortunate for, for Teague and Conley at this point, is there's just too many high offensive power point guards in the league that you kind of look at that guy's like, well, he's not Russ Westbrook. He ain't Chris Paul, but he can, mm -hmm. they can definitely lead. So Utah, I think, is a great fit for them. They needed a point guard since they got rid of Darren Williams. <laughs> yeah, really. And Trey Burke gets some of the bench time in there, and he starts every so often, but he isn't developing just quick enough to really run that offense just yet. I hope he does. I root for the guy. The last name that we might see coming up in the trade deadline would be Blake Griffin. And in terms of star power, he would be the biggest name moved unless Boogie Cousins gets moved. Uh, of course, this brings up the Celtics once again, and it does bring up likely other teams. I read today the rumor of Carmelo for Blake Griffin. Please, by God, no. Don't let that happen to my Knicks. Uh, but doesn't mean it's out of the question. Anything could happen at the trade deadline. What teams do you think would be interested in Blake Griffin? It's an interesting question. I think it's kind of more who has something that the Clippers would, would want. Um, you know, for the Knicks, that actually, <laughs> that actually might be interesting because um, I was talking with uh, Chris Liss on the radio show the other day, uh, the Rotowire radio show, and he was saying essentially that uh, Carmelo was taking too many shots from, you know, you've got your Godzinga shirt on, you know, that the Knicks should be focused on building around him. And that with Carmelo there, it's hard to do that. You know, Blake Griffin's also a scorer and maybe a bigger concern. He plays a similar position, but in today's small ball NBA, that could be your starting, you know, bigs. 
And Blake doesn't have to have the ball as much as Melo. He doesn't have to shoot as much as Melo. So, you know, that could be interesting. Um, but as far as the Clippers, you know, they're set at center. They're set at point guard. Um, if they trade Griffin, you could say, well, maybe they would want somebody that could um, do something a little different at power forward, or maybe they could upgrade their star power on the wings. But, um, you know, there aren't any teams outside of, again, maybe the Celtics that just kind of jump out as like, oh, hey, this is a team that has plenty of assets that the Clippers might want. And if they're not, I mean, I don't think Blake is enough of a – he's not a problem. So I don't feel like they should just move him just to be moving him. So – He's one that, that if they do move him, I would think they should get something good for him. Yeah, so as Dan, our executive producer, was just letting me know in the studio, the Nuggets, another team with assets, another team with picks, young talent. Uh, and speaking of, it's funny because when I think of the Nuggets right now, uh, Nikola Jokic has come up as an uh, advanced stats all-star, not all-star in that term, but in terms of the rookies. Uh, and they have a lot of young talent there too. Emmanuel Moutier, someone I love to watch play basketball, turnover prone earlier in the season. I don't think... Emmanuel Moutier would be on the move so quickly, uh, but it would be a, a, I think it's a weird fit. I don't see Blake wanting to go to play in Denver. Maybe, maybe Peyton Manning has something to do with that. Maybe he's getting recruited to play in Denver and win them a <laughs> basketball championship. But that would be an interesting one as well. All right, trade deadline is the 18th. There is a bajillion rumors. That's not a number. I don't think it's a number. Professor, is that a number? It's not a number, it but we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. Take a look through the clip. Let us be moved any guys like Blake like Boogie Cousins like Carmelo Anthony maybe who knows make sure to comment below with what you think the most logical destination is and then for my fun please give me your craziest five team trade deadline deal because I will happily debate with you guys down in the comment section make sure to follow Professor DRZ at Professor DRZ on Twitter check out the Rotowire Hoops column and make sure to stick around this weekend because on Sunday you will see a clip a screamer of a clip on why Andre Snellings believes that there is maybe somebody greater than Michael Jordan on the all-time list. It's going to be his first solo segment. We're very excited for it. It's quite fun. Check it out. Like, favorite, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.